Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about air conditioning. I'm going to show you a repair that uh, anyone that's handy can do. We're going to do a recharge on my system. I'm going to show the real young kids, the freshmen and the sophomores, and maybe even some juniors that have never driven before, how to make the AC turn on on most cars. And uh, we'll start right off with that. So over here I have my controls. I have my different uh, fan speeds. I have my cold to warm, so I want it on cold, but then I have max AC. When this is on, your air conditioning is on, but it's recirculating the air that's inside the cabin where you're sitting. If you have it on AC, it is taking the air from outside and it's bringing that air in and then it's cooling that charge. And then we just have vents. So your air conditioning when it's blowing should be coming out of your vents. It should not be coming out of your defrost or your floor. If it is, you probably have something going on with your uh, doors inside. Uh, they're called blend doors. You might be having a problem with that. Uh, by the way, when your air conditioning is on, your compressor is working, and you are using more gas than normal. Your gas mileage, you're going to notice, is going to go down because your car is now turning a compressor. Also, you'll notice that your car is uh, lacking power than it used to. Usually, usually drops about 10 horsepower when you have your air conditioning on. All right, so uh, those are you kids that have never started a car before. You put your key in it. That is called accessory. That is run. And then you have start. And it switches back. You just, once it starts, you release and it stays in that run position. Accessory, off. And then if you're sitting in your car and you don't want to use a lot of functions and you just want to chill and maybe listen to the radio or something, you have another accessory, which is one step back from off. In this position, you can't remove the key and off. Sorry, inside the vehicle. All right, let's start off with our compressor. So our, on our compressor, we have a clutch that comes on when we put it on AC. It's run by a magnet. So we have an electromagnet right here and uh, makes our pistons and crankshaft turn in here. But if you notice, we have a big pipe and a small pipe. The bigger, fatter diameter pipe is what's called the low pressure side. The smaller diameter side is called the high pressure. So we're gonna follow the high pressure hose and it comes to this, which is called a service port where I could put gauges on it and see how much pressure it is when it's running. Then I have a high pressure cutoff switch. If the pressure gets too high, it winds up telling the computer that it's too high and it shuts this clutch off. That's on the, on the front, it makes our AC not work. And then we have a connection right here uh, where there's an O-ring going to what's called our condenser. By the way, this is a very common part that goes bad. It's called a Schrader valve. Uh, I'm gonna wind up replacing these. So I'm gonna replace this one and I'm gonna do the low side too. But we go to the condenser that's in the front so you can see our condenser. Uh, condensers are common that they uh, wind up breaking and leaking. They like to get hit by rocks. Like you see a rock got through right there, but it's not leaking. Usually systems have green dye in them and you'll see oil and dye come out of them. But you can see on occasion that a couple things have hit it. Now, usually you get a fender bender, you get into a front end collision, you're replacing radiators, condensers, maybe even uh, um, transmission coolers. So we come out to the other side and we have a high pressure line coming out here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but we have a high pressure line. Comes on all the way down. And it keeps on going down into our evaporator. So inside this box here is an evaporator that gets cold. And uh, we have a fan over here that blows air across this and brings our cold air inside. Also inside there's a uh, heater core which runs on your hot coolant so you got two different pieces inside to get you your hot and cold but this one's called an evaporator then on this side it starts our low system so it goes from a high to a low inside our evaporator it goes into this piece which is called a receiver dryer it acts like a filter for our system we have another service port with a Schrader valve this one is leaking I can see a little green dye coming from it that's why I'm replacing them now we have what's called a low pressure cutoff switch if the pressure is too low winds up sending a signal to the computer to uh, shut the compressor off that it's not working. So a lot of times when your car has no AC, your compressor clutch ain't working because it's all leaked out. So I'm trying to show you some common places where they leak. So they'll leak from here, they'll leak from here, anywhere where there's a joint and an O-ring, underneath this clamp, underneath this clamp. 
So now let's follow our low pressure side back. So we go through a hose, it goes across the front of our motor, and it goes right back to our compressor. Now, in the last video, the guy was talking about that he had a, uh, an orifice. Now, on this vehicle, the orifice is somewhere in this pipe. So it could be right underneath this connector. I'm not exactly sure, but it's a little tube that is replaceable called an orifice tube. So it's a little different than the last video you guys watched. All right, so uh, to replace these straighter valves, you need a specialty tool. Now what happened was I went to AutoZone and I got into an argument with the guy because first thing I was looking for was straighter valves and he said he didn't have them. By the way, that's what a straighter valve looks like. They're removable. And he was trying to tell me that they were the same as a tire. And I was like, no, they're not on my car. It's not the same as a tire. And he's like, well, I don't have them. But he got on the computer and I looked them up and he wound up having them because I need to replace that one, which is our high side one. And that side, which is our low side one. And there are two other Schrader valves in there. And those are like tire Schrader valves for other cars. I wind up putting new caps on it. And over here, our sticker tells me that I need to put 2.1 pounds on it. So I have uh, 1.2 pounds here, or 20 ounces. And then I have another can to get it fully charged. So what I have to do in the meantime is I got to uh, drain the remainder of my system out. But uh, let me talk to you what I did, which was pretty inventive as far as making tools for the Schrader valves. I wound up making a tool out of an old rivet that I can get in there to unscrew it for the low side. And then I took a socket, an old socket that I was never going to use again, and I wound up cutting it down the center so I can get the high side out. I have this tool back at the school, but uh, I don't have it up here in Pennsylvania, neither did the auto parts store. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to wind up... Uh, draining the system out the rest of the way and when I'm ready to take the Schrader valves out we'll come back okay guys so first thing I did was drain the system out did it very carefully by releasing the gas out of here which uh, I don't recommend you do you should go to a center and put it on a recycling machine but uh, if you're pretty handy and, and you got some car experience under your belt you can do this at home safely so uh, just drained the system out now I'm going to remove the core with the tool I made so it don't twist just like the center of a, a tire Schrader valve you can hear some pressure in it all right and I got my valve out it's got some corrosion on it, it might be why it's leaking and I'll wind up putting a new one in it like I said this is super common I remember I had to do them for my wife a couple of years ago on her car. She went to a dealership and she went in there for an oil change and she wanted them uh, to check her AC system out. And they wanted to charge her something like $500 to do this. Some crazy number. I'm, wind, I'm going to wind up doing this job for probably about, I don't know, I'm probably into it for like $60, $65. Put my new Schrader valve in. Put my tool in there. Start twisting it by hand. Make sure that the threads catch. I'm going to put my wrench on it. Make sure I get it nice and tight. Oh, my wrench is having trouble here. Okay, she's getting snug, sealing up against the O-rings that are on the Schrader valve, and she's nice and tight. All right, so that's one valve replaced. Now let's go to this side. We got a, another valve. Now we got another valve to replace. Like I said, I made this one out of a, an old rivet. And same thing, I just untwist it until it comes out. Some more pressure still in there I guess. Alright, and that's our other Schrader valve. Get my new one out of my bag. Here's my new one. And just 
gonna tighten it in when I uh, get back to the school. I think it tightened all the way. All right, so the next thing on our agenda is I'm gonna have to uh, use this tool right here. So the next thing we're going to wind up using is this. You can get this at uh, Advanced Auto or any pretty much any auto parts store. It's going to have a gauge on it uh, for putting onto the low side, telling us if we're good or not. We want to be kind of uh, when this thing's running and we're charging it, it should be between 50 and 40 when uh, she's running. And uh, high side's got a pressure too, but I don't have my gauges here. Um, that's usually somewhere between 150 and 250. But this hooks right up to our low side. Let me get you a good camera angle. All right, now I'm gonna recharge my AC. It's got this like quick disconnect connector on it, which you have to like pull up to get it to go on. And it catches itself in the place. Now, it's gonna squeeze this trigger. And I'm gonna start charging it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside the car and I'm going to wind up starting it. And right now we're at, uh, I can't see, but uh, somewhere around 30 PSI in there. Now usually when the car is not running, it's usually about almost 100, like maybe 90 will be in the red area. But I'm not going to be able to get uh, everything I need out of this can. I'm going to have to wind up using this can too. But it will suck it in a lot faster if I uh, turn the car on. Watch our AC clutch, we'll see how it's not working right now, but when it gets the right pressure, it will click on. See the clutch click on? We need to get that to stay on steady. So the other can just screws on. Get it nice and tight. We want to get the compressor to the point that it stays on steady. It's kind of cold out today. It's better to do this on a really warm day. It's probably about 55 degrees out. So you get different pressures by the outside temperature. Feeling this pipe. It's definitely on the cold side. You feel your low side pipes. My low side pipe here is ice cold. Okay guys, just in case it wasn't clear to you how to find the service port that you add your Freon to. What you look for is you have a skinny hose, that's your high side, then you have a bigger hose which is your low side. You follow that low side, it will be on the low side will be your service port to put it in. This piece here which is called your receiver dryer, 
on Fords, it's actually attached to it, but on some vehicles, it actually comes out of the line. 